Hey everyone, this is Big Face from Big Face Robotics. I'm uh, starting work on my latest robot project based around two of these wheels. I picked these up relatively cheap. Um, it's a 250mm diameter wheel with a, a rubber tyre on it. And the robot design is going to have two of these with the robot chassis uh, balanced in between these two wheels. Um, almost like a balancing robot but hopefully the weight distribution of the chassis in between these two wheels uh, will be sort of naturally self-balancing so the first job is to have a look at the wheel work out how to mount an axle through the middle of the wheel and support uh, the wheel and axle onto the a body of a robot and then look at how to actually get some drive to these wheels so uh, I've made a bit of a start, I'll take you through where I am uh, up to now. So here we go, before I get too involved in a project I like to do a little, uh, a little prototype, um, check the feasibility of what I'm doing, make sure it's going to work, and you can see what I've got set up on the bench here. Uh, first job was to design and print a hub to attach the robot to a, a drive axle. Um, as you can see I printed this uh, with cutouts to accommodate the, the shape of the wheel. Uh, I've got a, a captive nut on the other side of the hub there that you can't see. And another half nut, I bought some of these uh, M8 half nuts on the outside to secure the wheel to the axle. If we go around this side, oh, let's get some better light over here. If we go around this side you can see I'm actually using an M8 shouldered bolt as the axle and I've 3D printed two bearing housings for some skateboard bearings and uh, that's taking the weight of the wheel. I've just mounted it all onto a piece of aluminium plate for now just so I can set it up on the bench and uh, there you go, it spins quite nicely. The next job then is to work out how to get some drive to the wheel. Um, I'm going to use these motors again. They may be a little bit undersized for this, I'm not sure, so we're going to have to see. But I, uh, I've 3D printed a, a motor housing, as you can see, because the little metal brackets that you get with these were a little bit flimsy and would bend and allow the motor to move around a bit. Didn't like that, so I've printed something a bit more sturdy. And I've started work on the gear that's going to attach to the wheel. So this is a 95 tooth gear, obviously this was just a test print and this is going to attach to this side of the wheel. I'll show you from the front so it makes more sense. It's going to attach onto there and then a smaller drive wheel on the motor that's going to drive the, the wheel around. So I'm uh, just, just about to print out the proper version of this and uh, get it mounted up and take it for a test. So I printed out a proper version of the gear. Um, as you can see it's a nice fit, it fits in to the wheel hub nicely and I've drilled holes for the uh, bolts to come through and captive nuts in the gear itself. Um, I also printed a small drive gear that attaches to the motor and I've run a few tests on this and uh, one thing that was immediate, immediately obvious is these teeth are not quite big enough um, and the gear, the gear was slipping slightly so I've gone back to the drawing board and I'm currently printing a 82 tooth gear and the gear teeth are slightly bigger on this one so that should help with uh, the drive gear gripping the the wheel gear. Uh, the other change I've made um, these motors are, are okay for what they do there's a fair bit of uh, movement between the motor and the gearbox I've actually moved this clamp onto the gearbox itself and that makes everything nice and sturdy so I'm just going to finish printing up this gear, print a new drive gear as well and I'll test it all out. 
So everything put back together and you can see the setup. I've got the motor and drive wheel. Uh, the wheel gear is on there and obviously the wheel attached with this axle through the bearing block. Everything's moving if I push it. I think I've got this gear meshed a little tight at the moment which I will uh, I will address. Because you can hear some excess noise there but if I run it and connect this up to the batteries So there we go, like I said, a little bit noisy. I think uh, I think the gear meshing is not quite right, but the principle is there. This is uh, this should work, um, and I'm going to make uh, a set for the other side, for the other wheel, and uh, I can be begin building a chassis then. So I've started printing out the other pieces I need for the other side of the robot drive. I've uh, got the bearing housings there. And that's my test uh, piece of aluminium that I was uh, bolting everything to for the prototype and I now want to make the proper base and uh, so I've cut a sheet of aluminium as square as I can get it and to get all the holes in the right place I have uh, used LibraCAD to lay out the hole placements and I've stuck the paper down to the aluminium and I'm going to use these as reference to transfer the punch holes or the punch marks uh, onto the aluminium sheet ready for drilling. So here's another quick look at the hub design. I've printed out the one for the second wheel. You can see the captive um, half nut inside there. And this uh, this is a nice friction fit onto the hub. Or onto the wheel, sorry. And then drill three holes through the wheel and, uh, and it gets bolted right through. So I've been continuing work, you can see both wheels mounted to the aluminium chassis plate. Uh, you can see the bearing holders there and the motor mounts, I've reprinted these. Um, I made them a bit bigger to allow for the fact they need to go around the gearbox. And I've also added a mounting point there for encoders, should I wish to use them in the future. I'm not going to put them on there for a minute, uh, we're going to see how that goes. I've also mounted the sonar sensors on here as well. So. There we go. That's the setup. And that bit's uh, ready to get wired in. I've also made the bottom plate, which is where the batteries are going to sit in between these aluminium angle sections. And I'm using threaded bar to, uh, to mount all of this together. And some plastic tube there for spacers. And uh, you'll see how all that goes together in a minute. So the next job is, uh, is I've robbed all the parts off of the uh, RC robot and I need to get all of this mounted onto this plate which is actually going to sit above this one like that and the battery one's going to be mounted below. So I'm going to figure out how I can get all of that and the Raspberry Pi and the camera and, and the power switches and everything else mounted onto this top plate, that's the next job. So I've um, mounted all the electronic components onto the top plate of the robot. Uh, very familiar setup. 
Uh, I've got a power rail and a power switch uh, connected that will connect down to the, the batteries. Uh, an L298 motor driver and my homemade Arduino Nano carrier board there. And the Raspberry Pi and webcam mounted onto this top plate. And that will fit onto the top of the robot and, uh, and be ready to go. So I did put the robot together for a bit of a test and then went back to the drawing board and I've had to reprint these uh, wheel gears and the drive gears again with bigger teeth. Um, I was really struggling to get the get the um, drive gear to mesh properly and the little bit of flex in the wheel and in the, the motor mount itself meant that the, uh, the teeth kept slipping. So I've had to go with a reduced gear ratio, so I've got 66 toothed uh, wheel gear and a 10 tooth drive gear there, so that's uh, reduced my torque to the wheels a little bit and uh, disappointing because the, the gear ratio I had seemed to be working uh, well on the first test, but like I said I can't have the gears slipping, uh, so I've gone for bigger teeth. So I've printed the second gear for the wheel, I'm going to print another drive gear and I'll put it all back together and then hopefully I can show you it uh, driving around and give it another, another little test run. So the robot's all put back together. You can see the batteries underneath there. Got the sonar sensors on, the motors and bearings are in there and the electronics on the top. Wiring's a bit of a mess at the moment. I'll tidy that up. Um, there we go, that's the, that's the setup as it is at the moment. So I'm going to take it for a spin and, uh, and see what it does. I have my concerns about weight distribution. I thought having the, the batteries down low would, would mean the robot could sort of uh, drive this centre section up and propel itself along. I don't know if I've got enough room um, between the axle and the, the weight of the, the batteries to actually uh, push the robot along. Um, luckily with the design of the threaded bar running through I can adjust the weight distribution as required. So I'm going to take it for a little test. Um, I'm going to change up the software as well after that. Um, but I'm just going to put it on the floor and see how it moves for a minute and see what we uh, see what we need to do next. Okay, so there we go. It does work. It spins really, really well. Uh, the gear ratio with the coarser teeth seems to still be working okay. Uh, you saw from the test drive the one problem is as the uh, as the centre portion moves as the as the wheels um, or the, the motors try to drive the wheels. Obviously, this whole um, this whole middle section tends to want to. Uh, spin and the wheel stays still so I don't know whether I can sort that out in software or whether this is going to be a, a case of redistributing the weight um, around the robot but there we go uh, mechanically this is done uh, like I said tidy up some wiring and things like that but it's on to the software next so I'm going to wrap this video up for now and thanks for watching as always um, come back soon because I'm going to be continuing work on this uh, Get some software work in. I've got the uh, MPU 6050 um, in there so I can sense the tilt of the robot and see if I can uh, sort some of this out in software. I might be putting encoders on um, and all that will be coming up in the next video. So, uh, again, thanks for watching.